Do you think the Spirit Frontier merger moves ahead? <laughs> well, something's going to move ahead. This is like a kabush, kabuki dance, you know, or you have the music and somebody's left mm -hmm. at the last chair. I don't know what is actually going on today. But now Frontier was very aggressive in going after Spirit. And as you may know, Bill Frankie, who's the chairman of Frontier, used to own Spirit. So he's he's got his legs in both of these deals. JetBlue is desperate to make this happen. They've already made five bids. It's, it's every day it seems to change. They up their offer. And what I would suggest, one part of the offer is how much per share and what percent of the company. What's on the table now is Frontier will have 51% and run the airline under Bill Frankie. But there's a lot of moving parts that, frankly, we don't know about. It's only the insiders that know that. And I think in addition to share price, what smart people are going to look at is if they get cash, that's one thing. If they get shares, what is the pro forma for the combined companies, whichever they are, long term to create greater shareholder value? I don't hear people talking about that much, but it's very important. You're calling JetBlue desperate. If that's the case and they don't win this bid for, for Spirit, what, I mean, what, what's another airline they could go after? What are your thoughts on their next move? Well, Alaska grabbed Virgin uh, when JetBlue was bidding for Virgin Atlantic or U.S. Uh, so that's off the table. Sun Country's kind of small. It's only 50 airplanes. So I think the real issue here is organic growth versus fast growth and facilities, planes, and pilots. Example, if you grow organically, it takes longer, might be more expensive. Resources like gates would be an issue. When you merge, like Frontier with Spirit, you get increased capacity, increased pilots, increased gates, and lower overall cost because you're not going to have the same overhead for either company. I think JetBlue doesn't want this combination of Spirit and Frontier because it's going to be a very hard competitor in a very low-cost airline mm -hmm. environment. David, if we see more M&A in the airlines industry, what does it mean for customers? Will all the concerns, will some of their concerns be alleviated, what they're seeing right now at the airport, flight cancellations, delays? Does that go away? That's not going away anytime soon, I'm afraid. July 4th is not going to look good. You still have pilot issues, staffing issues. The airline industry has overscheduled to its capacity with human resources, and that's going to be around for a couple of months. The issue, I think, with, with this combination Everybody talks, particularly the, the government and the Biden administration, is going to talk about what's good for the consumer. Well, look, these two carriers are very low-priced carriers with low cost. That's not going to change. If anything, it would be more aggressive. So from a pricing point of view, I see the consumer benefiting from the combination of Spirit and Frontier. And if you were to ask me on the sidelines what should probably unfold, I think that's what's going to unfold. Uh, either one's going to be reviewed by the DOJ. Uh, I don't know when JetBlue gives up <laughs> unless they just keep writing checks and break up fees because they've increased both. So I don't know what's in their head. I'm assuming these carriers have done long-term pro formas mm -hmm. and know what, kind of like going to an auction, right? Right. You got your limit as to what you think the other guy's going to bid and what you can afford. And I've been in one of those in an airline deal. And the other guy runs out of money. Now, I don't know what JetBlue's right. ultimate strategy is other than maybe stopping a tough competitor because they will be the fifth largest and ultra low cost well, aside between Spirit and Frontier.